want to say welcome to C3 Online, and uh, we're in the second week of a series entitled A Seat at the Table. And as we talk about the table, really, the table is, really, it's God's table, and God desires us to be in relationship with Him. And what I love about, about God is this, there's always a seat at the table. There's a seat for you, there's a seat for your family, there's a seat for your friends, there's a seat for every person on the earth at the table. And part of our heart at C3 Church is to bring people to the table. We want to see people in, in a relationship, a growing relationship. In fact, we say it like this, we're here to love people to a growing relationship with Jesus. Man, we want that for you, we want that for every person, that is the mission of our church. Right? Our vision that all Columbus right, would know Jesus. And here's what I know at, the, at God's table. Man, there is mercy and there is grace and there is forgiveness and there is peace and there is joy. And God desires that for every single one of us. And so last week, if you were here, we talked about awareness and how love looks outward. Today, we're going to continue on this path um, with a seat at the table. I don't know about you, I know Thanksgiving is coming up. Come on, man. That's when we sit around the table, we eat. Here's Thanksgiving, one of my favorite holidays of the year. Here's why. You got your family. Sometimes you may have friends around the table, people that love you, people that you love. And it's the only day of the year that you can get away with eating your entire body weight in food. Come on, somebody. I know you're there. If you're like me, I like to graze all day long. And, uh, you know, one of the cool things about our family, always growing up, was my mom made this special dessert only for big days. It's called pistachio pudding. Pistachio pudding. In fact, it was some kind of crumble crust in the pistachio pudding, and there was, uh, of course, pistachio nuts in it. She would take uh, Hershey chocolate bars, break it up, and it had like a cool whip topping. Listen, they're going to have this stuff in heaven. Can't prove it scripturally, but I'm telling you, we love it. My, my family loves it. And growing up with two other brothers, you know, we could pretty much kill a tray of it ourselves. Well, now we have, each one of us brothers have kids who are teenagers. And so we come and we're eating, and my mom will come and she'll put that in the refrigerator. Well, me and my brothers know it's there. I don't know if my teenage kids have caught on it yet. But all of a sudden, we're eating the turkey, we're enjoying it, but we got our eye on each other. Because if someone gets up from the table, which I think last year was my youngest brother, Josh, gets up, I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. I got to go over there and make sure I get myself a square of the pistachio pudding. It's, in fact, I, I anticipate it. I anticipate eating the pistachio pudding. Now, today, I want to talk about anticipation. Anticipation is this. It's to foresee or to act in advance of. Thanksgiving, I anticipate the pistachio pudding, okay? Now, here's what I know about anticipation. It's a kind of hope, right? Because we're hoping for the future. Anticipation is, is really a form of faith. We're believing for something, you know, setting ourselves up as if it is going to come true. You know, it's like a kid uh, with the wonder of anticipation on Christmas morning, right? I mean, you can cut the energy in the room with a knife. They're just so excited. They're anticipating, anticipating. And here's what I know about with, with our life with, with faith. I think for many of us, we may have found ourselves having lost the wonder of following Jesus, lost the anticipation, lost the excitement, lost the newness, or maybe even lost part of the real relationship that God has for us. You know, anticipation, here's what I know. It can lead us to faith. It, it can lead us to believing the best. Or anticipation can lead us to anxiety. It can lead us to believing the worst. Anticipation can lead us to hope, or anticipation can lead us to fear. So let me ask you today, what are you anticipating? Are you anticipating the best? Are you anticipating the worst? And then how do we, how do we live with this godly sense of anticipation in this life of faith? And so I want to take you to the scriptures. This is Jesus. He, he had lived his life, right? Walked with the disciples, and then he dies on the cross and he is risen from the dead. <clears throat> he's about to ascend into heaven, and he's kind of given his disciples the last, hey, rah, rah, here's some instructions, and here's what he tells them. This risen Jesus who's about to ascend tells his disciples this in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. He says, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for, my, wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So here is Jesus like, hey, I want you to wait for the gift. 
I want you to wait for the gift that my father is about to give you. So here are the disciples, and what are they doing? They're anticipating. They're anticipating this gift. And then we see this. They're waiting in the upper room. They're, man, they're in unity. They're in one accord. They're praying. And all of a sudden, in Acts 2, uh, 1 verse through, through verse 4, it says this. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, like a blowing of a violent wind came uh, from heaven. And the scripture says it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So the disciples had this incredible experience in the upper room, this incredible gift that God the Father had given them. They showed up, they anticipated, boom, in faith, God came through. Peter and the disciples come out of the upper room. He, Peter preaches. 3,000 people come to Jesus, and we see the early church rolling forward, people coming to Christ daily. I want to go back to this. Jesus had told them, go to Jerusalem. They went there anticipating the gift from God the Father. If you grab one thing today, I want you to understand this, that anticipation is a posture of faith. In other words, anticipation, a God-given anticipation, is really positioning in ourselves to believe, positioning in ourselves to take steps of faith. It's believing that God is going to do what He said He's going to do. That is a God-given anticipation, which is really form, a form of faith. Let me ask you this. Do we live our lives positioned for God to move? Do we live our lives positioned uh, and postured in a posture of faith? Do we live like that? Do we, ex oh, do we have an expectation? I mean, this relationship with Jesus should be an adventure, right? And so it's really us showing up to the table, um, we can't wait, expecting to eat some incredible food. And so, you know, it's, it's like a kid, that, you know, a, a six or seven year old, you're just like, hey, go get ready. We're going to get ice cream. What does the kid do? Woo! They run over, they put their shoes on, whether they're tied correctly or on the right foot or not. They, many of them will even go sit in the van. They'll sit in the car. Can't wait to go. Can they drive the car? No. Do they even know how to get there? Uh, probably not. Can they pay for it? Uh, no. Do they even know what to order? No. Is All they know is they're anticipating getting ice cream. You know, I think God desires us to do that. What's that kid doing? He's posturing himself in a place of faith, believing that he's going to get ice cream. He's anticipating because of the words spoke by parents, grandparents, aunts, or uncle. Anticipation is a posture of faith. So how do we live out this anticipation in a posture of faith? I would say this, anticipate God speaking to you. Anticipate it. Like, do we really believe that God speaks today? Do we really believe that God is speaking to us? I love what the scripture says in Psalms 32, 8. The Bible says this, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Here's God's word going, man, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to you. I'm going to instruct you. I'm going to teach you. God has given us the Holy Spirit to what? To lead us into all truth is what the scripture says. God desires to speak to us. How different would our lives be if we anticipated believing that God was going to speak to us? You know, a few years ago when my, my son Caden, who's almost 20 now, was about two or three years old as a toddler, I was kind of putting some, some notes together. I was going to write this book called Lessons I Learned from a Toddler. And I'll never forget it. I would spend that year or so of his life like looking for God to speak to me. And it, I remember one time I'm at a, um, the Polaris Mall, uh, mall in the area, the Playland. And they got a big wall around it. There's really only one way in and out, so the kids are protected, and everything is foam or plush and soft, and it's got this zoo and uh, a slide. And Caden, the little guy, and he comes over, he's so excited. He runs, goes up the slide, comes down, and we're, comes back, we're high-fiving, oh, buddy, runs, goes up the slide, comes down, woo! And then pretty soon he runs, and he comes down the slide, he waves. I'm like, oh, he's not coming over anymore. But I'm like, hey, buddy, hey. runs up the slide. Pretty soon the smile comes off his face, and he's just running up and going down, running up and going down, running up and going down. In that moment, I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and go, that's where you are right now. I was like, whoa, what? He says, yeah, you're, you're doing the right things. You're in, you're in my will, but you're just going through the motions. You've lost the relationship of it. And I remember just sitting there weeping in this playland. Somebody, you all right? I'm like, yeah, God's just talking to me. Why? Because why did God speak? I, I was anticipating God to speak. When is the last time we opened up maybe the scripture and we anticipated 
God to speak. We put ourselves in a posture in order for God to speak. Uh, I, I think, it, are we expecting that? It's, I think for many of us, we're going through life. Have you ever tried to talk to your teenager? Come on, somebody. They got their ears buds in, they're on their phone, and you're like, hey, hey, hey. And they're like, huh? Right? The only thing they're postured for is to get a phone call or a text from their friend while they're jamming the music. But they're not in a place to have a conversation. So they go, what? Are we doing the same thing? Have we postured ourselves in a place to, to hear from God? And how do we do that? Well, it's opening up the scriptures and allowing God to speak to, to us from His Word. Maybe it's spending, we cut away time in our day to spend time with God in prayer. Lord, speak to me. Maybe it's going, man, I'm going to church today and I can, I'm jumping on, on the C3 online campus and I'm looking, I'm anticipating for God to speak to me today, for God to challenge me today. Maybe you, you're in a conversation, wow, God speaks to you, a movie. I don't know about you, but for me, movies really speak to me and, uh, you know, God speaks through that. Why? Well, I anticipate it. There's times I show up with a notepad, like, all right, Lord, speak to me. Are we anticipating? Anticipation is a posture of faith. Do we anticipate God speaking to us, to us, to you? Secondly, do we anticipate God using you? Do you do, you do that? Do I do that? Am I anticipating? I love what the scripture says in Ephesians 2.10. It says this, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you have to realize this. You were created. If you've come to Christ, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. God created you to do good works. You are to bear the fruit of Jesus, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, all those things. You are to bear that kind of fruit. That's what the scripture says. So you were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Are we allowing, do we anticipate God using us? I remember when I was in high school, I would wake up every morning and I would pray this prayer. I'm like, Lord, I pray that you use me today. God, bring someone into my path that uh, I can share the love of Jesus. I can share faith. I can be an encouragement to them. And here's what's crazy. Every day, I would find myself in a conversation where God did it. I, why? Well, I postured myself in a position of faith. To I was anticipating God using me. If we go through life believing that God desires to use us to be a blessing to the world around us, guess what? He will. He will. I've seen it over and over in my life. Um, you know, this life of Jesus, with Jesus, was meant to be an adventure. Like, it wasn't meant to be this stale, dead religion. It wasn't meant to be this once a week, we come to a church or jump online and hear a message. We were meant to live this out, walking hand in hand with Jesus every day. Going, all right, Holy Spirit, speak to me today. Who are you going to bring in my path? Bring me a divine appointment that I can show the love of Christ. That's the adventurous life that God is calling us to. But are we anticipating that? Are we positioning ourselves for that? Imagine waking up every single day and you're anticipating God to move through you. There's an author by the name of Bruce Wilkinson wrote the prayer of Jabez, incredible man of God. And he says every, he, he has a, a, a large bill, a dollar, I think, I, I don't know, he didn't say, probably a $50 bill, $100 bill, in his wallet at all times. And he walks around looking for who to bless with it. It could be a waiter or a waitress. It could be a, a single mom in need of groceries. It could be someone that needs some gas. Whatever it is, he's walking around going, God, lead me today. He's anticipating to be used of God and his anticipation, posturing himself in faith, God opens doors all the time. What would happen if we begin to live like that? Do we anticipate God to speak to us? Do we anticipate God to use us? Let me give you one more. Do we anticipate God showing up? Do we really anticipate that? I love what the, the Bible says in Mark 11, verse 24. Jesus, he says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. You know, this Christian life is not meant to be, again, dead or stale. It is meant to be a life of faith. What does that mean? We literally live a life beyond our control. We move just from the natural into the supernatural, right? Where we, we believe God is moving around us. He desires to, to use and use us by loving people. And God desires to move. Like, do we believe that? When is the last time you took a big step of faith so big that if God didn't show up, you were bound to fail? That is truly a life of faith. You talk about posturing ourselves in faith. That's it. Lord, if you don't show up, it ain't going to happen. God, we need you to show up. God, we're anticipating you, expecting you to show up. You know, when we pray, do we really expect God to move? 
uh, when we take a step of faith. Like, God, I need you. So again, hear me. Anticipation is a posture of faith. You know, what can you do this week to position yourself in that faith? God, I position myself, I posture myself for you to move. You know, how do we apply this today? Let me give you some, just some, some quick thoughts, some takeaways from this message today. Anticipate God to speak to you. I would encourage you this week, open up the scriptures and don't close them until God has spoken to you. Open them up and say, God, I believe you're going to speak to me today through your word. God desires to speak to you. And if you're listening, I believe he will speak to you. Posture yourself today. Anticipate God speaking to you. Maybe you need to disconnect from all the craziness. Pull out the earbuds, put down the phone, and be still and know that He is God. What is that? Anticipating God to speak to you. Secondly, maybe anticipate God using you. You know, this week I would encourage you, man, ask God. Wake up in the morning. Ask God, Lord, lead me to someone that I can show your love today. What is that anticipation? You are now looking, posturing yourself in faith. Put a $20 bill, $50 bill, $100 bill in your pocket. All right, Lord, who can you lead me to that I can bless this week? What is that posturing ourselves with anticipation? And then I would say, anticipate God showing up. Pray a prayer that is bigger than you. Pray and believe for something within God's will that is bigger than you. And the next, here's one, the next time you feel God prompting you to step out, pray for someone. Pray for someone's healing. Step out, be generous. Whatever God speaks to you, be obedient. Your faith with action is where the supernatural takes place. Hear me today. Anticipation is a posture of faith. Is your life postured in faith this week? Choose one of those things, apply it, and posture yourself in an area of faith. You know, maybe you're watching this message today and you go, man, Conan, I I don't know Jesus like that. Well, God loved you so much that He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth and died on your behalf, died on my behalf, so that we could know Him, so we could be forgiven, so we could be made new. And there's a brand new life that God desires to give you through His Son, Jesus. And so maybe today you go, I want that. I want to know what it is to be forgiven and made new. I want to pray for you. And I would ask you, if you would, if that is you, to pray this prayer after me. It's really just your confession that Jesus Christ, you're making Jesus Christ Lord of your life. I would ask you to pray this with me. Just tell him, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying for my sin. Jesus, I repent. Forgive me. Make me new. Wash me clean. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Give me the strength to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Secondly, know if you're watching and you go, man, Conan, I I do, I really want to live a life anticipating God to move, anticipating God speak to me, God to use me, God to move. I just want to speak a blessing over you today. I want to speak that over your life. So today I do. I bless you in the name of Jesus. That all fear, that all anxiety of, 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 of the enemy of life will break off of you in Jesus' name and that your life will be filled with hope and that your life will be filled with peace and will be filled with faith. That this week, as you take bold steps to posture yourself in in the arena of faith through anticipation, that God will move mightily in your life. I pray that the power of God will flow through you this week as you become just like Jesus and you walk out the will of your Father. As you begin to live out love, as you begin to live out generosity, may the favor of God rest upon you. May you sense His presence and may you this week change the world one relationship at a time, one conversation at a time, one act of obedience at a time. I speak blessing over you. I speak favor over you. I speak peace over you. In Jesus' name, so be it. God bless. Have a great week. If you were encouraged by today's message and you're ready to take your next step, text C3NEXT to 97000. And if baptism is your next step and you live in the Columbus area, I want to let you know that Baptism Sunday is coming up next Sunday, November 22nd at our Canal Winchester campus. Head to myc3church.com slash baptism to get signed up. Also, today we are launching our online shop for all our C3 gear. You can buy hoodies, hats, windbreakers, and other C3 merchandise. Head to our app or website to purchase your C3 gear today. Now, have a great week.